Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This is a practical math channel. We do math with a purpose. This video right here is Foundations of Math number three, where we're gonna go over place value and decimals. It is part of a math course to build foundational skills in mathematics. I'm building a house right now. I had the best guys do the foundation on that house and the rest is following easily. That is the same with math. Math is actually not hard, but it's so cumulative, meaning based on the previous section, that if you got a few pieces missing, all of it falls apart. So the intent of this course is to get you up to speed to build a solid foundation and go from there. Whether you're studying for a union entry exam in mathematics, a contractor's exam in mathematics, all the standardized math tests are pretty much the same. And this course is gonna give you the foundational skills to do well on those types of tests. There's a link in the description to the playlist that'll give you access to all of the videos in this course. There's also, I'll put a link right here to the playlist. In addition, in the description of this video, there's a link to a document that'll bring you through all three courses. I would print that document out. i would keep track of it in a notebook, have a pencil in that paper out in front of you, do the problems before I do them with the video paused, and then unpause the video and then see if you did them correctly and see if you're picking up any tips and tricks from that. Okay, let's get started right here with place value and then move on to decimals. I have a number right here, 278 and 534 thousandths. So let's just kind of break that down a little bit and see what that means. This place right here is my ones place where the eight is. This is my tens place where the seven is and the two is my hundredths place. Everything to the left of the decimal are whole numbers. To the right of the decimal are partial numbers. So this is my tenths place where the five is. So that actually means five tenths. You could reduce that to a fraction. Five goes into five one time and a 10 twice. So five tenths is a half. This is my hundredths place where the three is. So this is 53 one hundredths. And then this right here is my thousandths place. So the fours in the thousandths place. So I could call this 0.534 or 534 thousandths. I could keep going in either direction. The one thing that's a little tricky is that this is the ones place on the left, but on the right it's a tenths place because that's five tenths. If I had another digit to the right, that would be the ten thousandths, the hundred thousandths. And then going to the left, this is the thousandths, ten thousandths place. Usually in construction, you're measuring with the tape accurate to about 16th of an inch. After a 16th of an inch, you're going to go to a dial caliper in thousandths of an inch. So that'll be three places after the decimal. Okay, now that we have place value, let's start figuring out converting the words um, into decimal notation. So here are the problems. Write the following in decimal form. Go ahead and pause the video here and then write these out and then check your work against mine. Okay, five and six tenths. That and is a decimal place. So this looks like five and six tenths. All right, so it's gonna look like that, where it's a decimal 5.6. 23 and, there's my decimal place, 23 and 32 hundredths. So tenths place, hundredths place. 145 and, there's my decimal place, 205 thousandths. So that's 205 thousandths of an inch. 340, 340. And there's my decimal place, one thousandths. So that's going to be zero, zero, one. And that's my thousandths place. Okay, convert the following into words. So I'm reading to the left of the decimal. That's 23. And this is my tenths, my hundreds, 45 hundreds. And 45 hundreds. 123 and 561 thousandths. And then lastly, number seven here, five. And I have four digits now, so that's 3,245 ten thousandths of an inch. All right, let's look at some rounding problems. So the direction round to the thousandths place. Again, this is the tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths. So we got around to the thousandths place. This number is less than five. So we're gonna round down. So this is gonna be 23.123 
123 thousandths. Round to the thousandths place on this one is this one. Right there, the 8 is greater than 5, so I'm going to round up. So this is going to be 124.347. Then on this long number here, again, tenths, hundreds, thousandths, we've got to round to that number there. This is a 4, so I'm going to go round down. So it's going to be 98. 9,856, whoops, 9,856 and 765 thousandths. Go ahead and pause the video, do these problems before I do them. Next, we're going to look at adding and subtracting of decimals. The key here is that we line up the decimal point. So I'm going to rewrite this, lining up the decimal point. So 452.4 and 23.3. So the decimal point is lined up perfectly there. I add straight down and get seven, five, seven, and four. And I bring that decimal point straight down to you. Quick check, 450 approximately plus 20, so be about 470. I can see I have the decimal point in the right place. Next one, subtraction. Again, I'm gonna write it down with the decimal points lining up. 59.4 minus 13.2. They line up perfectly here. 4 minus 2 is 2. Bring the decimal point down. 9 minus 3 is 6. 5 minus 1 is 4. And I have 46.2. Okay, the next one, uh, this is to the tenths and this is to the thousands. I'm going to rewrite them again, making sure my decimal point lines up. 345.4, 684. 0.231. I'm going to add those together. Decimal points lined up. No values here, but they're really the same as a zero. Zero and one is one. Zero and three. Four and two. Decimal point comes right down. Five plus four, nine. Four and eight, 12. Carry the one. Nine plus one, 10. And I have 1,029 and 631 thousandths. Number 19, I have 234,000, 345,000, it's subtraction. I line up my decimal place right here. I'm gonna have to start borrowing on this one. So four minus five, I can't do that. I have to borrow 10 from this. That makes this a two and this a 14. 14 minus five is nine. Two minus four, I can't do that. So I gotta borrow from here. That makes this a one. Now I have 12 minus four, eight. 1 minus 3, can't do that. I have to borrow from here. That'll make that a 7. 11. 11 minus 3 is 8. Decimal point comes straight down. 7 minus 5, 2. 10 minus 3. Well, I can't really do 0 minus 3, so I'm going to borrow from that. Making that a 0, making this a 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. And I have 72 and 889 thousands. Now with multiplication and division, I got to keep track of how far over the decimal point is. So here it's over one place, here it's over two. So the answer is going to be over a total of three places. I could write this down either way. This times 25.4 or 25.84 is going to be the same thing. So I'm going to write the one with more digits on the top, 84.23 times 25. Point four. I don't line up my decimal place. That's only for adding and subtracting. Here I keep track of it. So now I'm going to multiply that 4 through here. 4 times 3, 12. Carry the 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. 4 times 4, 16. Carry the 1. 32 plus 1, 33. I have a little placeholder down here. Next I'm multiplying the 5. 5 times 3, 15. Carry the 1. 10 plus 1, 11. Carry the 1, 20 plus 1, 21. Carry the 2, 40 plus 2, 42. I got two placeholders here. I'm going over to you. Change colors. 2 times 3, 6. 2 times 2, 4. 2 times 4, 8. 2 times 8, 16. I'm going to add all those straight down now. 2, 14, carry the 1, 7, 8, 14, carry the 1, 4, 5, 9, 5 and 8 is 13, 
carry the one, 11, carry the one, two. So I have that long number there. I'm gonna count again, one, two, three. So I go over one, two, three, and there's where my decimal place goes. So 2,139 and 442 thousandths. Let me do one more. 125.12 times 32.34. Again, I'm over one, two, three, four. So when I'm done my final answer, I'll be over four places. Pause the video, do this problem first, uh, and then watch how I do it. So four times two, eight, four times one, four times five, 20, carry the two, eight plus two, 10, carry the one, four plus one, five. Placeholder, three times two, six, three times one, three times five, 15, carry the one, six, seven, three times one, three, two placeholders, two times two, four, two times one, two times five, 10, carry the one, four plus one, five, and then two times one, two. I got th three placeholders down here, three times two, six, three times one, three times five, 15, carry the one, six plus one, seven, three times one, three. I'm gonna add all those up, eight, four and six is 10, carry the one, one plus three, four plus four, eight, seven and six, 13, carry the one, six and seven, 13, plus three, 16, carry the one, nine, 14, seven plus two, nine plus one, 10, carry the one, one and three is four. Again, I count over one, two, three, four. From the end here, I go over one, two, three, four, and I have 4,046, 3,808 ten thousandths. You can see as well here why the first chapter in this book is all about whole numbers. You gotta be really fluent in addition and multiplication to do these types of long multiplication problems. Um, it just has to come to you really quick when you're adding down columns. So if you don't have that mastered, really go back there. Maybe when you're driving or in the car, just keep doing the multiplication tables in your head until you get them completely ironed out. I got one more problem here. I won't do that on here. Um, you could always check your work on a calculator to make sure you're doing it um, correctly. And then we'll move on to dividing decimals next. So on 24 here, it's saying 365 and 25 hundredths divided by 2.3. You could use that slash line. You could use a division symbol. Um, you could put it as a fraction, 365.25 over 2.3. But what that is saying is that I have 365.25 divided by 2.3. So the way I do this is I take all of the decimals out of the number going into this. So I'm gonna push that thing over one place to make it 23 because I'm pushing this over one place. I'm also pushing it over one place right here. So I put my decimal here and then it travels right up there. And that's how you divide um, with decimals. So then 23 goes into 36 one time. 23, six minus three is three. Three minus two is one. Bring down that five, 135. 23 goes into 135 six times. And that'll be 120, 138. No, but it's gonna go in there five times. So it's gonna go in there five times. Five times 20 is 100. Five times three is 15. So I have 115. Five minus five is zero. Three minus one is two. So I could see that's less than 23. I'm gonna bring that two down. And then 23 goes into 202 probably eight times. Let's just double check that. 23 times eight. 24, carry the two, 16, 17, 18. 184 to 202 is gonna be 18, so that's gonna work. So it goes in here eight times. 23 times eight is at 184. 202 minus 184, 
2 minus 4, I can't do that, so I got to borrow from this 20 right here. I'm going to make that 20 a 19. I make that a 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. 19 minus 18 is 1. So I bring down the 5 right here, 185. I could see it's going to go into there 8 times again. So that's going to be an 8. 8 times 23 is 184. 5 minus 4 is 1. So I have one left over. I think I'll just round to the tenth place because um, if I brought this down, it's going to be a zero. So I'm only in the tenth place here, the hundredth place there. So that's a good answer right there, uh, 158.8. You could always check your work with a calculator. Almost all these standardized math tests, you're not allowed to use a calculator, so you need to know the long multiplication, long division. Go ahead and practice on that problem right there. Check your work with a calculator. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. I appreciate you watching. I'd really love to hear your comments below. If you have any questions at all, um, please post them in the comments. And again, in the description of this video, I'll put a link to this document and all of the other videos as well. Thank you for watching.